to the UFC 269 press conference from the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada. And this Saturday, the action shifts over to the T-Mobile Arena for the final UFC pay-per-view of the year. In the main card opener, it'll be a good one at Bantamweight. A rising star with the personality and skill of an all-time great, holding the highest striking rate in UFC history and ready to make UFC 269 the Sugar Show. This is Sean O'Malley. And he faces a dynamic underrated force from Brazil, riding a three-fight win streak. Including the fight of the night performance, his last time out. Here is the 26-year-old Jiu-Jitsu black belt, Julian Paiva! We move on to the flyweight division. A former bantamweight champion, moving down a weight class to 125 pounds, and ready to begin a new quest for UFC gold. Owner of 12 wins, 10 by way of knockout. Introducing Cody No Love Garbrandt! Welcoming him to the 125 pound class will be a staple of the flyweight ranks, a New Zealand spark plug, looking to build off his jaw dropping finish of Rogerio Bontarin in March. Here is Kai Kata France! It's a matchup of ranked welterweight power punchers. Up first, the best mixed martial artist to ever enter the UFC from Argentina, and winner of eight of his last nine bouts. Please welcome Santiago Ponzinibbio! in a love of Dana White's Contender Series, who rattled the 170-pound ranks when he burst onto the UFC scene back in 2018 by producing some of the most memorable finishes in recent memory. Here is Jeff Neal! And then it's time for the World Championship fights. In the co-headliner, the Venezuelan vixen has the belief and ability to shock the world. A former Ultimate Fighter winner, owner of the third most wins in bantamweight history. Coming to the stage, this is Juliana Pena! Champion, the greatest female combat sports athlete of all time, one of the best pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the world today, and a list of records that runs a mile long, most wins, most finishes, most knockouts in bantamweight history, winner of 12 straight fights, it's the GOAT, 2-8 war champion, Amanda Nunes! And moving on to the main event of the evening for the UFC lightweight crown. First, the challenger, a Bayou-based superstar with consecutive wins over megastar Conor McGregor and ready to add the one thing missing from his stellar MMA resume, an undisputed UFC championship. Please welcome Dustin the Diamond Poirier. champion, Brazil's best, the newly minted UFC 155 pound title holder, on a run for the ages, 17 UFC finishes, the most in the company's history, 14 submissions, another UFC record, 9 straight wins, this is the unstoppable, Charles Dubrox Thanks for coming out today. We appreciate it.
appreciate it. John Morgan, where you at? <laughs> Start with Charles, please. To Charles, obviously, uh, you know, 11 years in the USC to get to this point, but there you are with the belt in front of you, sitting next to the, the, the women's goat. I just got to ask, what's the emotion for you as you sit there right now for the first time in that seat of honor? <laughs> Charles, depois de 11 anos no UFC, depois da tua trajetória, você foi campeão e você está aqui na frente desse cinturão e do lado da melhor do mundo. Como é que você se sente hoje com isso? É uma longa trajetória, né? Do lado de uma grande campeã. Para mim é um, uma grande honra. E, pô, eu tô aqui, eu, eu tô aqui para isso. Eu quero estar do lado dos melhores, eu quero ser um dos melhores. A minha história foi feita para isso. It's a great honor to be here next to the GOAT. It's been a long path and my path has led to this. I'm here for this. I deserve this and that's why I'm here. Charles, Dustin actually said earlier this week that he was happy for you when you won the belt because he's seen your journey, knows what you've been through, and he was happy for you. So I'm curious, do you consider yourself a fan of Dustin? Have you enjoyed watching him and his journey? O Dustin falou essa semana que ele ficou muito feliz com a tua vitória, pela tua trajetória e por tudo que isso representa. Você se considera um fã do Dustin também por, pela trajetória dele? Com certeza. É, um, é uma história gigantesca. Ele é um grande campeão. É, merece muito estar aqui. E com certeza amanhã a gente vai fazer um grande show. By all means, he's got a great path here. He's a wonderful career. It's going to be a pleasure to fight him, and we're going to go through war tomorrow. Nice. Hey, Charles, uh, we know how special the moment was to win the belt. So just asking, what would this win for you mean? Your first title defense. What would this represent for you in your career? Depois de tudo que passou, o que que significa para você defender esse título? O que significa uma vitória no sábado? Isso é um legado. Eu nasci para isso, eu nasci para estar aqui. Vocês sabem da minha história. Os médicos falaram que eu não podia jogar uma bola. E hoje eu sou o campeão mundial do pesos leves. Então a minha história é gigantesca. You know my story. I'm, I, it's, it's, I, I have doctors when I was 10 years old telling me I couldn't even play ball. I was born to be here. My path has led to this. Uh, it's, you're going to see this. I was made for this. All right, thank you. Then Dustin, uh, obviously for you. Let's go! You know, you had this, this similar opportunity in 2019, right? And obviously it didn't go your way, disappointing night. But I'm just curious, what's the biggest difference this time around? I mean, is it something within you? Obviously you're not flying halfway around the world. Is, I mean, what's the biggest difference this time? If I didn't advance in the last few years since that title fight, I wasted a few years. You know, I think I'm a better fighter, uh, more well-rounded, and just a little bit better mentally. You know, in, in that fight with Khabib, when I, when I got up and exposed my neck, maybe losing the round and, and taking that a little bit slower instead of losing the fight would have been a smarter decision. You know, just be smarter in my movements. I, I got a lot of experience, and, and that was another huge learning moment for me to, to put these, you know, these uh, fights together. There's so much going on at all times in there. And small mistakes, small slip-ups like that can, can be detrimental. Yeah. And, and Dustin, you, you had that amazing quote the other day where you said this fight is like 25 minutes for eternity, right? I mean, but I'm just curious, does that mean that like you look at this result as a way to measure your entire body of, of work? Like, can you not be happy with everything that you've done if you don't walk away with this win? Nothing that I've done from the moment I laced up a pair of boxing gloves, the moment I put on a pair of mixed martial arts gloves and hit the mat, ever has been done in vain. I've created a beautiful life for my family. I've learned so much about myself through the process and things that, I, you know, these lessons I've learned, are, I'm, I'm very grateful for. But being the world champion is forever, 25 till eternity. That's what's going through my head every night when I go to sleep, you know? And uh, it, it means a lot to me, man. I can't put into words truly what it means to me and my family. Thanks, Dustin. Dana, lastly, I just wanted to ask you, right, uh, what your thoughts are on this main event? It seems like kind of a special one, especially on the hard course, right? Two guys that have been in the USC for 10 years each that seem to be at the peak of their careers at the same time. What, what, what do you think about this fight? Yeah, I mean, some people's journeys are different than others. You know, some guys come in and, and, and burst onto the scene. These two have, you know, been grinding and working hard for a very long time. 
You know, I know he got criticized for some of the decisions he made last year. I think every decision he made was brilliant, played it exactly the way he should have, and uh, here he is today. Um, this kid has been, has been working his ass off for a long time. It's, it's like the two blue-collar guys are here and going to fight it out on Saturday night. I love it. It's a question for Amanda. Amanda, at this point, the story of each fight you have is about who, what does this challenger have that you haven't seen before? When you look at Juliana, does she have anything that you have not experienced in that octagon? Honestly, what, what Juliana has is just not to lose, you know? So I just have to be sharp because I see her style many times in my whole career. Her best friend, Misha Tate, is like, if you watch Misha Tate fight, it's the same, it's the same fighter right there. So I see before. Uh, Juliana, for you, I'm curious, what do you think of Amanda's assessment? I mean, she has to say what she has to say, and that's fine. That's a part of the game. You know what I mean? We've been talking about this fight for a very long time at UFC 200. When she beat Misha, she said that she would fight me, and she didn't. She let you Ronda lose Rousey cut the line. You lose all your fights. I, I, I actually won, and I beat the girl that, that ragdolled that you, as fault, a matter of fact. I, I beat the girl that beat girl. you that night, and you said you in the press conference you. that you would fight me, you and you absolutely did not fight me. You, you let Ronda lost. Rousey cut the you line lost. after she got knocked out. You Never so a you, you, you picked a can, and you've been continuing to pick cans. Everybody that you pick has already lost and been. Defeated. You never wore. A what, I mean, you're gonna say whatever you gotta say, but the Realize reality is, that. is that UFC 200. You said you would fight me in the press conference, and you still have not. You lost. This is something. That. This has been something that's been brewing since UFC 200. That was what five years ago. You guys act like I'm just making this up or I'm trying to trash talk. This is actually facts that have happened in my career. This is things that have actually happened. I'm not making this up. You said you would fight me at UFC 200. Sarah McMahon almost beat you. I beat Sarah McMahon years ago. Oh, big she deal. So we both won and we both beat the same opponent. Who? We both beat Sarah McMahon. Oh, Jermaine beat saying? you. Okay, I beat Shayna Bobby, Baszler you know, before you beat you. Shayna Baszler. So big fucking deal. What does that have to do with anything? What is like... It doesn't make any sense what you're If you think about what you're saying, it doesn't make any sense. You're trying to say because you beat Sarah McMahon faster than I did. beautiful for you. You talk the truth. I'm telling the, the truth. Is he. All I'm right? telling the truth. No, you don't. How am I not? You're trying yeah. to take my win away yeah. from Sarah McMahon. Yeah. I yeah. beat people that you beat too. So All right, let me jump on. in the middle of this. Uh, who's got the next question? This shit will go on all night, I promise you. Uh, questions for Kai Car France back here on the stage. Go ahead. All right. You're obviously welcoming one of the better bantamweights of the last few years to the new division. But just from the outside looking in, it seems like Cody's speed is what really gave him the advantage at bantamweight. So are you expecting that same speed now that he is cutting 10 pounds further down to flyweight? Yeah, I guess we'll, we'll find that out come Saturday night. You know, I want the best Cody. I don't want any excuses. This is my title fight eliminator. Uh, this is the road to the title for the flyweight division. And uh, I want the biggest name. So when Cody came across the table, you know, I jumped at the opportunity. So I want to test myself against the best. And um, I can't wait to get in there. Similar questions for Cody. At this point, you've obviously been asked about the cut so much. But this close to the fight, I would imagine every day you're feeling the cut more and more. Even at media day, you said flyweight hits harder. Uh, so right now on that stage, how is the weight cut going? You know, I feel great. I have one of the best, you know, doctors and nutritionists in the game, Dr. Matea, cap and nutrition. We've been working for eight months. This hasn't been an overnight eight-week camp to get down to flyweight. This has been a years in the making. I had a flyweight title shot over a year ago. You know, I got COVID. Things happened, you know, and I'm losing the Rob Font. You know, it goes on. So when Kaya Car France came up, it was a great fight. You know, this dude begged me to, to fight. He put himself in this situation. I worked for this opportunity. There's a different mindset. He has an average mindset. I have an elite mindset. And that's what the difference in this fight's going to be. Kai, do you have any response to that? I guess we'll find out come Saturday night, you know. Bring that's, that same energy. And that's the best thing about this sport. We can talk all we want. Come Saturday night, you're going to find out. Finally, one more for Cody. Uh, I know you're focused on Kai, but there is a man further down that table that you've had a lot of war words with on Twitter. So, Let's go. Hey, listen. Listen, this, this dude, he comes out here, and he, he does the thing, he walks his walk. He, look, he dresses, does the hair. 
but he's got different problems than no love problem. He's got holy on to my right, and holy on is uh, battle tested in here way farther than he's ever been. Sean, any response to uh, seeing Cody down further down the table? You talked a lot on Twitter, but now that he's further down the table, do you have anything else to say? <laughs> you don't want to talk. He's, he he's won know. one fight since 2017. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a, and you haven't fought anybody. Who the fuck have you fought? You've exactly. won one fight. But listen, I can't be mad at this kid. Look, I can't be mad at this kid. He understands when he jumps up in competition, his hype goes away. His money why'd goes go to, away. His little go sponsors go away. I, call, I, get his I asked ass for that fight. Straight up. Why'd you go down 25? I thought I'll, 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 I'll win tomorrow at 25 and fight you at 35 and still kick your ass. That's how stupid you are. Why would you easy, do that? Easy. Easy. It's your easy work. But I'm not worried about you. I'm focused on Kaya Carr. I'm a little worried. You should be... Can, hey, can adults speak? Can I speak? You got holy on. You sound a little about. worried. Exa I sound what? A little worried. About what? Me. A fucking clown sitting to my left. Bro, I'll eat you like cotton candy. I think, like let's just square up a little bit. I'll eat you like cotton candy. Square up and like. just, uh, Dana, can me and Cody square up just to, for the future? Please, let's do it. We'll do it right now. Square up. Hot sauce for everybody. Everybody gets a bottle. Wants to stay off. We can stay off. Thank you. Who has the next question? Question for Jeff. Taking on Santiago Ponsonibio, of course, great opponents. Where do you think he ranks among the guys you've fought before? I feel like he's one of the best. You know what I mean? I wouldn't rank him above Wonderboy. Uh, like one of just on a whole nother level, but he, he's up there, you know. And do you feel that he's the same since he's came back from his injuries? You know, we've seen him fight twice now, but just do you think he's the same guy? Yeah, 100%. I think he's the same guy. I think he's still dangerous. He's still the same uh, Ponce Nebio. Uh, I'm not saying like the whole layoff, long layoff uh, diminishes his skills. He's, he's still good. And for Ponce Nebio, where would you rank uh, Jeff among your opponents you fought before? He are tough. Everyone there in this top 15, the best fighters in the world, the best competition division in the world, man. Everyone are tough, man, but I don't care, you know. My goal is the belt. I'm more than ready. I won eight on my last nine after this victory. This Saturday, I put nine victories on time fights. Two times I know come out on number eight in the world, man. I'm more than ready for this belt. I am back, hungry than ever. After I'm sick, after the old problems I need to pass, I'm fighting for my life. And any human can stop me right now. And just one for Amanda. Do you believe that this fight with Juliana is as simple as stopping her wrestling, or do you think you have to worry about everything from her? Honestly, like I'm, I'm ready for everything. She bring it up Saturday. Honestly, I'm that kind of, I'm that kind of fighter. I don't play with my my opponent. I'm more of, always focusing, and I know it's gonna. I have 25 minutes, you know, to finish her. I just have to take my time and pick the shots in the right times and finish the fight. No matter what. What if she show up Saturday, I'm going to have the answers, and I will finish her. This belt is not going to go anywhere, baby. I'm telling you. Question for Cody, no love. As the former champion of the Bantamweight division, what does it make you feel when you hear Sugar Sean O'Malley call himself the unranked champion of the Bantamweight division? I just laugh. I think it's comical. I think this guy's a joke, but uh, like I said, I'm not facing him. And uh, he's got Holy on, so that's who he should be focusing on. But hey, you know what? He got, he got the hype. He's building up the hype. He's got the fans behind him. So he's got to go out there and prove to himself. And uh, he's unproven. So at the end of the night, he's still unproven. He still has a lot to prove in this sport. Sugar Sean, as the unring champion, making your first appearance for a press conference here, having the pop that you have, do you feel an extra expectation to get the result that you've been saying? A knockout, taking his lights out Saturday evening at T-Mobile. That, that's, the, that's the plan every single time I go into a fight, whether it's on the you know, main card or on the... Per oh, never mind. Uh, it's always going to be on the main card. I'm always going to go for the knockout. Julian, what do you make of that when he says he's going to knock you out on stage? You fought his teammate Kyler in the last fight. What do you make of his talk? Alian, o que você acha do que ele falou? Que ele vai bater em você logo de cara e você ganhou do cara que treina com ele. Cara, a única coisa que eu vou falar aqui pra vocês, vou colocar esse palhaço no lugar dele sábado. <risos>
Vou colocar esse palhaço no lugar dele. Qual é o lugar dele? Não é no Octobre, é no circo. Então sábado eu vou colocar ele no, palha... no, no, no lugar dele, valeu? I'm gonna say I'm gonna put this clown where he belongs. And where does the clown belong? He doesn't belong in the octagon. He belongs in the circus, and that's what I'm gonna do on Saturday. Hey, let's go, man. Let's go. Final question for Dana White. Obviously, you got the best broadcast team in the world, but yesterday, Dominic Cruz called out DC's commentating, him being prepared. Do you have any comments about that? Um, yeah. Listen, everybody has their opinions, and, uh, you know, I guess DC better do his homework, man. He better, uh, better come out and, uh, and make Cruz happy. Question, question for Dustin to you right here. How nice is it to have gone into this fight week with no background noise, no animosity, and then I mean, you can come to this press conference and not have to worry about verbal sparring with anyone else? You know, I didn't really worry about it the last time. I just, uh, all that's noise, man. I, I'm too experienced for that stuff. When I was younger, I used to really pay attention to what people were saying and watch a lot of interviews and videos and footage, and I know who I am, man. Nobody can tell me who I am. I'm up here put myself in this position, and I honor this position and the opportunity I have Saturday night. Nothing anybody can say or nothing that goes on from here to that bell ringing can change anything that's going to happen. Paid in full, baby. Question for Dana. Obviously, we are going to have a big, big fight on this card in the shape of Leon Edwards against Jorge Masvidal. You recently said that you're working on something for Leon. Can you provide any update on that? Is there any movement? No, no, not yet. But yeah, I mean, we're working on. I mean, we're working on fights all the way up to mid-April now. So um, we'll get it figured out here soon. Hams out too. Yes. <laughs> and final one for me. Speaking of Brits, a lot of Brits have fights in the work for March 19th, I believe. Are you guys going back to London? It's going to depend on how, on how all this stuff plays out. As long as you know, uh, you know, these COVID restrictions, you know. St can stay normal we we can start traveling internationally again other than uh than abu dhabi you know what i mean so we'll see how this all plays out over the next couple months talking new strains and, and and all this kind of stuff so we'll see what happens thank you question for santiago as it was said when you entered the stage the mo the best argentine fighter to ever enter the ufc can you describe the following you have in Argentina and how big this event is back home for you? Ah, for sure, man. This growing and growing a lot. This is sport the most growing in the world. And also in Argentina too, you know, Argentina, South America. The sport is growing. They watching me, the, I'm a reference for them. You know, I'm so happy to, to represent my blood, represent my people. I come and working so hard for so many years, man. I'm living 15 years ago in my house to Brazil. Going behind my dream with nothing in my pocket, you know, and a big dream, you know. I'm here watching for my dreams, you know, and listen, I'm close today. I put seven victories in a row. I am sick, but I am not. I am back. I am back hungry than ever, man. And I'm going to beat this guy. This Saturday, I'm going to put nine victories on my last ten fights, and I'm going to go to the belt. And a question for Jeff. We, when we spoke yesterday, you said that uh, Santiago's jab is his most dangerous weapon. If we focus on you, what would you say is your biggest weapon or best advantage? I'm just going to knock him out. I got, I got all the tools to do it, so I, I, got, I can hit him with a jab, I can hit him with a cross, a head kick, leg kick, I'm, I'm going to finish the fight. It sounds like you don't necessarily value his striking on the same level as yours. No, no for sure I value his striking, I just think mine's better. All right, good answer. We will see, we will see Saturday, man. I am feel better than ever, man. I am ready to smash this guy and go to the bell, man. I have eight victories in my last night fight, two-time fight with the number eight in the world, and the two-time I put to sleep. You know, I'm doing a lot of work in this division, you know. 17 fights in this company, 14 victories, man. Um, brother, I am back to the belt, you know. Good answer. A uh, question for Sean. In the embedded, uh, you sort of expressed some... Uh, Ideas about Halim Paivam wouldn't necessarily talk trash to you. Now he kind of did. Does that surprise you? No, I, I, I'm not, I didn't think he wouldn't talk trash. I just said I know he doesn't speak English, so it would be, I didn't know how that would play out. But yeah, no, I, he, he's, he's going to talk, not talk trash. If he thinks he's going to knock me out in the second round, 
you know, I don't know if that's talking trash. That's just what he thinks. And as mentioned, he defeated Kyler Phillips, your teammate. Does that add a little extra fire for you to get some uh, sort of revenge? Not really. You know, honestly, you go look at that fight. Kyler beat that dude. <laughs> All right. Question for Dustin. I'm sure you visualized getting to the title many, many times in, when you were younger in your career. How would you say that reality has matched the expectations you had when you were a young fighter? Uh, you know, I knew it was going to be a journey uh, of, of hard work. I, I've, as a young fighter thinking about fighting, I never thought I'd have the setbacks and the adversity I've had throughout my career. Of course, you think it's going to be smooth sailing like a movie till you raise a belt up, but I'm thankful for all of it. And um, I, I still am waiting to find out what that moment feels like when I wrap that undisputed title around my waist, and then I'll be able to look back and tell you. All right. Uh, Amanda. It's easy for a fighter who is so dominant for so long to get a little complacent or perhaps bored on the top. But would you say that now that you have a daughter, that you have extra fire to sort of get you to push even further? Honestly, like, I'm happy than I used to be. So she, she brought everything for my life. You know, much love, happier. It's like, that little girl is everything for me. I feel like everybody have a daughter know what I'm talking about. Even Juliana know what I'm talking about. She's sure, a mother sure. as well. So... Uh, that little girl is everything to me. And my motivation is like went to the roof, you know. I want all my memories with her in um, fight week, in my training, in the gym, here right now with all of you guys. So I want to show her when she, when, when she be able to understand it, I want to show her every single picture. Look, you were there with your mommy every single day and, and everything I did. So she's here tonight. It's a huge motivation and bringing me like... A lot of fire for this fight, for sure. All right, and for Dana White. I think most people consider Khabib to be the greatest lightweight in the UFC. But what do you would it take for either Charles or Dustin to surpass him, in your opinion? This me? Yeah. yeah. What was? Sorry. What, was what would it take for either Dustin or Charles to surpass Khabib as the greatest lightweight in the UFC's history? Yeah, listen, you know, th th these guys have had a, had a long, hard road. They got to keep grinding. It's almost like Usman, you know, when Usman came in here, look how hard he's worked. Look at what he's accomplished. Look at the guys he's beat, the records he's broken. That, that's the path. All right, and final one for me. We talked about London. We talked about Kamzat. Sweden has usually been a stop for the UFC before the pandemic. Are there plans to return to Sweden, and if so, when? Yeah, like I just told him, uh, you know, it's going to depend on how, how, how all this plays out with COVID restrictions. I'm obviously going to go to places that are easy to do business and easy to put on events that are going to treat the fighters right, that are going to treat the fans right. Those are the places that I'm going to go to. Comes out in the main event? Huh? Comes out the main event, UFC Sweden, if all things go as planned? Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. Sweden's always been a great spot for us, man. It's, it's, a, it's a fun place to have an event. Always sell out. We go to... Three, four in the morning. Hit right, McDonald's at five in the morning. It's fun. It's a good place. We look forward to having you. Thank you. All right. Thanks, brother. Go ahead. For Juliana, uh, I know how confident you are you're going to win this fight. Is it your expectation, if you do, that you would have to give an, Amanda an immediate rematch? And more on top of that, would you ever consider going up to 145 and trying to get that belt too? Yes, an immediate rematch. And when I win that fight, I will be 11-2 and two in the division, which is a better bantamweight record in the history of the bantamweight division. And as far as walking up to 145, I don't know. I'm pretty comfortable in, in knowing that 135 is my proper weight class. But uh, you we know have to cross that, that bridge happen. when we get there. You know, that, you know that's not going to happen, right? What? It's not going to happen. You're not going to be a champion, girl. Oh, we'll find out you Saturday night. We will find out Saturday night. Saturday. One of us is going to be dead we wrong. Find out. We will see. We will. Okay. Put it down in your head right now. We will sleep it. Put, about put it that. down in your head because we were already supposed to fight. That, and is you had my, COVID. that is my time. In my month. We'll see. December is my month, baby. We'll see. All right? Oh, All right. And just one for you, Dustin. Uh, I know how important your charity is to you and everything, and you have a big goal for this fight. Obviously, a big platform here. Do you want to just tell the people what your charity goals with the Good Fight Foundation are for this fight? Yeah, for this fight, I'm going to be auctioning off everything I wore to the Octagon. And uh, we're raising money to provide 300,000 meals for Louisiana through Second Harvest Food Bank. Yeah, thank you guys. 
Back before my foundation was an actual foundation, just when I was auctioning things off or selling on eBay and giving money to local um, charities, before I had my own charity, I um, did work with them and we raised 2,000 meals. And this is like circling back, you know, and I'm just thankful for the position for sure. Go ahead, brother. Uh, this is for Santiago Ponsinibio. You came from a great war with Miguel Baeza, a difficult fighter, undefeated, and with the Geoff Neal skills. And he's saying that he's knocked you out. How you see playing out this fight? Listen, man, I fight with a lot of tough kids. You know, I fight with Leonardo Santos with one arm broken. All my fight, I won this fight. I broken my radio in 10 parts. You know, I beat a Shamash Trican when he's under feet on 50 you now. Miguel Baez, a true touch number eight in the world, man. This kid not gonna stop me. You know, he's a tough fighter, but I don't care about him. I'm gonna smash him. I'm gonna knock him out. I'm gonna finish. I'm gonna prove I'm one of the best of the world. I'm gonna take somebody in the top five. Yeah, I'm gonna go to the bed. I'm gonna knock him out, Camaro Usman. You left Argentina with a dream. You had to live in a tent in a beach in, in Brazil. You get to the Ultimate Fighter. How do you see after all this year the grow in the UFC and the grow in Latin America? Because you are one of the biggest ambassadors of Latin American MMA. Listen, I need to do a lot of crazy shit for I don't have money, I don't have contact, I don't have nothing. I just only have a big dream. I go to Brazil just with I can do with nothing and I start my way, you know. I have 15 years working so hard you know, I did a lot of work, and for this, I'm gonna say nobody can stop me. You know, my life, my history, the life, give me a lot of power. My skill is better than ever. You know, my mentally, my history, my people, give me a lot of support, man. I'm the best Santiago Ponsinibio ever, and I'm gonna show this when I knock him out, this guy, in the Saturday night. You have a whole continent behind you. Good luck on Saturday. Thank you. All right, we got two more questions here. Go ahead. Hey there, one for Amanda and one for Dana. Amanda, it's been a while since you've had an opponent who was so adversarial. How much do you welcome all the fire that Juliana is bringing to this fight? She doesn't, she didn't show up. <laughs> Get her. Uh, you know, um, of course, like, I take longer. I got the COVID, I have to recover, of course. I don't need to lie. Like, why are, why are we gonna lie? I have COVID. Like, not, I did it, I have it, I recovered it. Now I'm here, ready to go, ready to kick Juliana's ass. So, it's gonna happen. Dana, final question for you. This is the first fight between two moms for a championship. Had, when you first allowed women, invited women to fight in UFC, did you ever think this would happen? Yeah, I mean, if you look at how much the women's, you know, divisions and, and, and fighting has blown up, how badass the champions are in the divisions. And uh, today I had a meeting we were talking about actually women's wrestling, where it was 10 years ago and where it is today. Women's wrestling is, is exploding too. Um, and I, I don't know if I, if I ever didn't think that it could be this big. I just never thought we, you know, the level... Of, of skill and technique that these women have. They're some of the baddest fights in the UFC. So uh, thank God I made this decision and, and uh, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm real, very happy about it. I don't know if I answered your question, but. You did. Okay. Yeah. We have another question, we got one more? Go ahead, Last, last one, because you cut me off last time, Dana. Um, I was gonna, this one's for Sean O'Malley. Sean, you're up here, you're doing face-offs with people that you're not even meant to fight against. You've got the crowd behind you. I'm curious, do you feel that you're living up to the sugar show that you said this pay-per-view was going to be? Yeah, um, yeah, it is super cool to be up here. Uh, I'm, I'm constantly, you know, you know, squaring off with Cody or whatever. There, there's just so many fights for me off. in the next... What, bud? Um, Cody's one fight away from the commentary booth next to Dominic Cruz, so I don't know what the fuck he's still talking getting, about. It's still done more than what you're ever going to do in this career. You're never, ne never going to amount to nothing. Well, trust me. Once wow. you lose again, get carried out on another stretcher, you're going to find out why, where you're going to be at. Where are you going to be at? Where are you going to be at? Exactly. Um, I don't even know what your uh, question was. I feel like you answered it. There we go. 
Guys, thanks for coming out today. We're going to rip this stuff out of here. We'll square them off for photo ops. We'll see you on Saturday.